Great, yeah. So, so yeah, we've been we've been chucked on, haven't we? Yeah. Um, and we're going to be talking about what we've learned from our times at altitude, aren't we? And like how we've kind of adapted and what we've what we've learned and what we do differently. Um, so yeah, that's what nothing. We, that's <laughs> I do nothing. That's, that's the aim of today. I'm sure we'll go sidetracked. Um, bri, bri. Better looking at us. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll yeah. take that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Simon, hi. Ian, hi. It's, it's a bit of a boys club at the minute, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, come on, ladies. Where are you? What's some ladies. Um, should, we, should we get going? I don't know. Should we give it like another? Should we just wait here silently? Tell us. Until, yeah. until, until, <laughs> well, well, we will not start until until a woman comments. Oh my yeah. god, our screen's just gone off. Oh well, no, it's back. It's on. back. It's back. On. It's back. It's fine. Ah, we've got Sophie, hi. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Well, while while we're kind of waiting for people to to pour in, I mean, I guess the people that are watching now have a think about some lessons that maybe you've learned on on if you've done any treks with us um because yeah i'm sure there are plenty um in in your head so we've got, we've got i think feeling. also there are lessons to be learned from just tracking in the uk like, oh yeah uh, for sure i think yeah. as well like there when you're out in the mountains perhaps training for your trip there's stuff that you think I can't, I can't forget this piece of kit when yeah. I'm actually out oh, on yeah. my track and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. So yeah. that's why it's just so good to actually get out and about yeah, when you are, true. um, when you are training. Oh, we've got Charlotte. Hi, Charlotte. Did Killy, Killy with us? Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Hey, here's Jerome. Jason, Jerome, um, Dave Remington. Thank you so much, Dave. I'm not sure if you've seen, but your video has gone up. Um, as part of the Vamoose. Yeah, um, yes. But do you want to just tell people about that now? Yeah, so Vamoose. So basically, if you don't know what Vamoose is, it's it's, it's the app that we use for, for a lot of our... Oh, there's my mum. Um, <laughs> Hi, mum. <laughs> Montelli. We're doing uh, a thing. Oh, yeah, it, it does look very Star Trek, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I've not got my Vulcan kit on there. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, so for those of you who don't know, Vamoose is is an app that we use, um, and we use it for our trips. So you can have your trip on there. We've got the itinerary. We've got lots of helpful hints and tips um, with training, and yeah. so you can see sort of day to day some videos on there but also uh handily it's got a little um countdown which people love um it's probably one of the biggest things that people yeah. share on social media sure. and stories and stuff so there's a little countdown to your trip but anyway so um recently the moose have just released a feature where you can um order a photo book which is super exciting so you can literally add sort of day-to-day -day all your pictures um a few little captions and stuff um and yeah it's it, it looks pretty good when, yeah, nice memory. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 it's really cool i yeah. like it and super easy to use as well yes. um so if you are looking for a little present for someone or like perfect yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's a perfect thing yeah, yeah. it's really nice personalized yeah. hey, right we've got a few we've got... We, we, we've got we've got a good group here yeah, so yeah. i think should we talk? I think we have to. We have to now start. <laughs> should we impart our knowledge? <laughs> Let's go ahead. So, should we start by talking about what trips we've we've done? Yeah, yeah. What, do, you, do, you want, do you want to start, or should I start? Well, yeah, I can start. So, yeah. I my first time at altitude was um, in 2022. I did Machu Picchu in September um, via the Tomoka route. Yeah, that was my first time at altitude. I then went on to do Mount Tubkal last year in May, um, which I absolutely loved. But there were a lot of things that I did differently just right. for having known how, you know, what it feels like to be at altitude. Mm. Training was a, a huge thing. And I know I've talked about it on previous um, Tuesday tune-ins before. Yeah. Um, so I can go into more detail about that if you guys want. Um, and then hopefully going on to do Mont Blanc, the Tour de Mont Blanc, sorry. Tour de Mont Blanc, not actually yeah. Mont Blanc, yeah, yeah. Um, later this year as well. So again, like I'm just, it's always about adapting, I found, mm. um, you know, preferences change and, yeah. and you want more things. <laughs> more, <I don't> <laughs> more things. <laughs> yeah and yeah. like some things that like, change in, in importance like that isn't it yes yeah definitely yeah i mean so yeah basically i i, I did tube cal as well um twice yeah twice so yeah the, the, the first time i did it i wasn't with evertrek so i didn't really know an awful lot about trekking yeah. um um so i was 
safe to say I was a bit shocked mm. when I went because I, I didn't do a lot of training for it the first time. I, I To be honest, I wasn't in the greatest mental state, mm. which is always... Yeah, uh, that's a huge It, it can factor. be a, a big challenge. Um, and so anyway, yeah, I, I definitely learned a lot with, with gear, like simple things like with gear, um, what to wear, what not to wear, um, and kind of how how to sort of train yourself sort of mentally to, to be a bit stronger, I guess. Yeah. Um, cause I, when I went back the second time, um, I definitely implemented a lot of, um, get that beard gone. <laughs> That's my brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the second time it was great coming back a second time, both times I did it with Dave. Um, yeah. Um, who, as you know, had problems the first time mm. he went, mm. but smashed it the, the, the second time. Um, Although we did make some mistakes the second time as well with stuff. That, yeah, there's, there was a... I think that's the thing, especially about like with, with a, a mountain like um, Tube Cal. Tube Cal, yeah. Um, you can go, I went up there in May and I had a oh, completely yeah. different experience to what you guys had yeah, in November. Did you well, so the go? first time we went was April. So yeah. it wasn't too different, I guess. Was there a lot of snow when you went? The, the... Not much. Not much. Not yeah. much. So there wasn't loads. I mean, it, it was summit summit day was there was there was a fair bit it wasn't too icy or anything yeah. um but then we went in december which was yeah so that's what i like easy. about that trip but i think yeah. it can be underestimated a lot yeah Tube Cal, because yeah. it's a shorter trip people don't realize that it's 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 it can be mean if you're not like if you've not trained for you're it not prepared you're for in it. the wrong headspace for it it, it can yeah. be can be a little rascal yeah yeah i mean one of the biggest things that it seems stupid now but i'm sure like so many people do the same as what, what i did is I, I took a water bladder with me yeah on, on summit day at tube cow and froze instantly yeah tube frozen i was just carrying a big lump i mean dave said this so many times just carrying like a massive lump of ice, ice. And so we were just like dehydrated for the the whole, and, and, <laughs> and like significantly weighed down by yeah, yeah, yeah. something yeah, like that you can't use. Unnecessary. <laughs> like, so so that that's a very it's a basic thing that you know we should have known. But yeah. You just sometimes you don't. Think you just about don't think things. about those things sometimes. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. so easily done. Yeah. Just get so complacent. So I think to start off then before we. Yeah. Um, as we were like kind of prepping for this this live, we were kind of comparing notes, and mm -hmm. you you were talking a lot about how you like mentally what you learned from it, and I was yeah, talking yeah. more physically, wasn't I? Yeah. So do you want to talk a bit about like mentally how you were able to kind of get past those things because it's so hard when you're tired, you know, yeah. mentally and physically, and like to try and push yourself forward and, yeah. and keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So basically, I think something that I learned from so doing two cal for the first time and not having that experience, and then so coming back the second time, something that I kind of put in place um, that really helped. I found was um, journaling. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. Which is not something that I I do naturally. Like it took it took quite a lot of effort for me. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not a reader. I'm not a writer. But I. It, because I'm quite an introverted person, mm. I tended just to, to keep all those like worries, mm. doubts, um, real sort of anxiety, sort of just inside. And like that first time I went, I after I came back from Tuka the first time, I just was not having a good time <laughs> in myself. <laughs> but like, um, so the second time I went, yeah, I did journal, and I found it just it just helped me express sort of how I was feeling. Yeah, when I wouldn't always naturally speak to people and say like dave i'm really worried about this part of the trip yeah. or or this happening mm. you know whatever that might be so i i journaled um sort of at the end of every day and sometimes in the mornings um and i did some video diaries as well which you can you can see we've got somewhere i guess online um and yeah so that really helped with sort of my mental state Mm. and figuring out sort of where I was um, and that just made it a lot stronger for me I think yeah yeah the, the video diary I did do on that Machi oh, Picchu it's not, it's not out yet. um <laughs> I look really rough but there there is one day it was the end of the first the first actual day of the track mm. 
And I just found it really, the altitude just really did hit. It hit us all and yeah. we were all quite low. And um, we kind of got into camp and I got into my tent and I did a video diary and I just said, oh, thank God, today's over with, you know, tomorrow's a new day. Mm. And then I think, I don't know whether we went into the NAS tent or I suddenly just like really plummeted. Mm. And, I, and I, we were camping below the high pass where you've got to go the next day. Right. It's called Tocto Pass. And it's a beast of a day. Mm. And I just started crying. And I was like, I'm so scared. Like, we've got to do that tomorrow. Yeah. And I've, I've really tough. struggled today. And it was just like, it was just like, Rosie, stop. Like, you pull yourself together. Because <laughs> you you can't you can't go like you can't keep keep going like this. You mm. need to like get a grip. Yeah. But I think also like it's nice to just be like, okay, how cry? Yeah, let it out, let it out. Take deep, deep breath, and then like we go again. So it, yeah. like, and it's nice because like you speak to your whole group and you're like, yeah, don't worry, we'll feel like this. We're all nervous, but mm. we've got our guide, and like we'll take as long as we need. Exactly. And that's what we did do. Yeah. And like we did it. Mm. Like, and you do do it because you don't really have much time. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. No. Um. But yeah, it's about taking time and just trying yeah. to rationalise and being like, you know, we're not going to run. Yeah. We're just going to walk yeah, slowly, yeah. slowly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to get down. Holy Probably, isn't this like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, we've got some comments here. Oh, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Kevin from the US. I kept a journal during Killy and love going back to it. I think oh, it that's me. really nice. Yeah. Nice to reflect and it's, on that. Yeah, exactly. It's nice, sort of, in retrospect, to look look back at things and, and go, ah, I'd forgotten about that. You yeah. Because at the time, sometimes you just, you, you, it just all blends into one. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, we've got, we've got a David Carpenter here. Dave says, Hello. No way you had a cry, Rosie. Not having <laughs> I know. So unlike me. Um, any other comments? Who we for? I journaled. Oh, yeah. oh, Mark. I journaled at EBC last year. I've done it before, but it helped me a lot. Oh, good that's good. Right that's now. good that other people are doing that. Yeah, then. that's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and then, yeah, so so then on Killy then. Yes. Killy, yeah. You, it was obviously nice because you had Jody, our running Yeti. We did. With you. We had, had Jody. Um, yeah. And it's nice then you can be honest with with someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, with, with, with Killy, I was in a... It was a funny one for me because I trained loads for it, um, which I'll get onto in a bit. Um, but I, I wasn't well like when we first started it. Well, it, yeah, leading up to it, I had a bit of a niggling cough and I was like, mm, it'll be fine. Yeah. I had a bit of medicine, a bit of paracetamol. I was like, it'll be all right. It'll pass. Yeah. Day one, got quite bad. <laughs> Day two, really bad. And then so I, it, I, it got, I felt rough. I mean, the guys in the comments, I, mean, I think we've got Kevin, Kevin in the comments. Um, and it's, yeah, I mean, they can, they can, I, I was, I, I, I was not in a good state. Yeah. Um, and I remember turning to Jody actually on like when we got up to Big Tree Camp, I think it was. Um, <laughs> he said Zach was practically dead. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't well, it was an understatement. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I I did not look good. <laughs> like I woke up in the mornings, I was like, "Hi oh, guys." <laughs> I remember we were getting like random updates, like when Signal allowed it from you guys up the trail, and it was like. Hell and horror because we were like Jodie's leg is like broke, like her knee she was really struggling oh, she, with. Yeah, yeah. And then you were you were coughing and spluttering all the way out. Yeah, we were like, yeah. oh god, we're actually not sure if they're gonna make it. Yeah. But you did, you did, and you well, managed to really dig deep and you pushed through regardless. Yeah, I mean and that's hard to do. Yeah, it was tough, but I think one of the biggest things that I learned from that is sort of the strength of of, of a team. And because I wasn't feeling great, and when I turned to to the other guys on like day two, I was like, I don't think I'm going to make it, guys. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go home. Um, and they they were just like, we'll we'll carry you up there. We have to no. <laughs> like like honestly, you know, together as a as a tiger bomb. That did it. <laughs> tiger bomb was a lifesaver. Yeah, exactly, Charlotte. Um, and yeah, so 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 just having. A really strong supportive team. Yeah, it just does wonders for your for your mental state when yeah. you're just feeling crap. Yeah. Um. And so that was a massive thing that I learned um, on that trip. Yeah. I, I guess I can kind of. Um. I had a similar situation, but my dad was really unwell when we did. Um. 
uh, tooth cow. Mm. And bless him, he he was rough, really <laughs> rough. And bless him, I won't get into it. But uh, I was like, I, I, there was a bit of sympathy, but there was a bit of tough <laughs> love because it was like, come on, you're really gonna that you're really gonna have to dig deep. Mm. loaded in with medication mm. um and just said like you know you're gonna do this you gotta get back and and he did he did do it but like it's you can just get so in your head can't you sometimes yeah, yeah. and then you like the, there's some and i mean i got i got on well on machu picchu on, mm. on and i couldn't do one of the days and it was the day before we actually went to the like the ruins and i was like oh my god if i if i'm not feeling well enough like i just mm. couldn't leave my room like just vomit in it was horrible just yeah. sh- like shivering just covered in goosebumps it was really horrible and i was like i can't let this ruin my trip i can't come mm. all the way to peru and then not do what I came here to do. It's tough, yeah. It's tough. And there's some pictures I I <laughs> not looking the best. Ghostly. <laughs> um, but yeah, like you you do somehow manage to dig deep. And yeah. It's, it's yeah. It, it's a lot of it is mental because physically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not there. Yeah. So so then should we talk a little bit how we physically trained then and how. Yes. And how and how we did that. Yeah. Um, well, do you want me to? Yeah, like, you start. Like, yeah. Well, so this wasn't so much a problem for me, um, sort of doing Tupacal the first time as much, as far as I can remember. But so, so leading up to Kilimanjaro, um, for those of you that don't know, don't know, I'm a dad. Um, he's two now, and so leading up to Kilimanjaro, I was really worried about how I was gonna fit time in to. To, to leave him and and go train um yeah so that was that was a real struggle of trying to figure that out but um it worked out in the end because basically all I had to do is get a baby carrier and it's and it changed my life honestly um if, you, if you're a parent with a toddler and you don't have a baby carrier get one it is just the best investment you'll 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 ever make um and so yeah no essentially I just went out with this carrier um, I did Penavan, which is a local mountain. Well, not local, but like yeah, an hour away. Um, yeah. Took him up there. He loved it. <laughs> he loved it. He was just bouncing <laughs> on my back. Um, and I did like the Garth a few times, which yeah. is like, a hill nearby. Um, and just just went on walks with him. Like yeah. not even hilly walk. Just just loads nice of. Nice to just get outside. Yeah. Two birds with one stone, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he had fun. Just go on loads of walks um did a couple of lunges yeah. <laughs> with him um and yeah i mean it was it was tough at first but like once you get going it's it's yeah it's, it's a game changer and that really stra- that strengthened everything yeah yeah i bet <laughs> um, i bet but yeah and to prove this i've got something to show you i've got something right watch this there's something well, watch something's, this. Happening. something's happening just to, I, I'm not lying. Here we go. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so cute. There you go. Little face. It works, parents. It's fine. You can do it. <laughs> if I can do it, you can do it. It's That's possible. so nice. And I'm young, single, no <laughs> kind of, no commitments. <laughs> so I was able to kind of get into the gym. But when I was training for Machu Picchu, I didn't, I didn't really know what I was doing. Mm. I was about three and a half stone heavier. And I just kind of got into the gym and I was like, oh my God, cardio, cardio, cardio. I hated every second of it it was horrendous mm. um but i did it and i and i got i got i got a lot fitter from it um for sure like better than doing nothing 100 yeah. percent um but i hated it and when actually i was out there i was i obviously machu picchu is um a much longer track than tube cal is but um I, I saw so much difference between doing that track and then doing tube cal mm. um, this year. So, yeah, how I, ch- I changed my training then, did it in the September. I must have changed my training more or less when I got back. Um, so, yeah, latter part of 2022. Mm. And I um, started doing a lot of weight training 
um, especially a lot of the single leg, leg exercises, brilliant for, um, for, for, for training for a mountain. Mm -hmm. And also you don't need to have access to a gym to do those types of stuff. Like, like you saw with Zach, like you can just do it out and about taking the stairs, um, on part of your walk, you know, walking backwards uphill, you know, to really help yeah. your calves, yeah, yeah. um, different stuff like that. You can be really inventive, inventive with it. But, um, yeah, that's how I change mine. I still do some cardio. I do boxing once a week, um, which really helps. And, um, I, I do the Stairmaster a couple of times a week as well. Mm. So, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not poo-pooing cardio, but it's about what you enjoy. And I think one of the discussions we had before we came on the live is yeah. it's all about, finding something that you can maintain and to do that you've got to find one something that you enjoy and and two something that fits in with your lifestyle yes because otherwise if you can't maintain it if you can't be consistent it it, it just isn't as effect, is effective is it no exactly um yeah. so that's so that's like one of the biggest differences um that i made and i learned off mm. of off of machu picchu was that I, you know it can be fun yeah <laughs> and i can really enjoy it and it doesn't have to feel like a massive task no. um so yeah that was that was one of my biggest learning in the fitness type of, yeah. type of things i think something really simple that i i did as well with uh, including like taking isaiah my son out for a for walks and stuff was it was really simple i'm, I'm sure it, it didn't do a lot but it, it helped a little bit with my fitness is um i just got up early in the morning i think it was on like netflix or something they've got mm. like these like 10 minute workouts oh my god brilliant yeah and it was just like leg strengthening exercises and just for like 10 minutes yeah. every other morning i think yeah it was when i just had time um before work i did those and then also like I got a load of resistance bands. Brilliant. And they yeah. were they were really handy just like at home. <laughs> yeah. Going around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. so yeah, like small things that you can do, like if you don't have a lot of time. Yeah, brilliant. I and I saw that Brian I said that um he uh, carried the beers on the walks, so nice. that was good for his fitness. That's and the way that to is something I could get behind. Yeah. Um <laughs> but yeah, it, it, you know, if you are somewhere that doesn't have loads of um sorry by the way if you could hear anything we've got people working on the roof and we've tried to negotiate with them <laughs> they're not having any of it <laughs> um so that that's that we're not we're not stomachs aren't making funny yeah. things, <laughs> thing. um where was i uh, i was talking what, uh, about oh yeah if you're somewhere flat because yes. i know i've spoken to customers that have like a miles away from yeah. like any hills yeah. and stuff like that is great for leg strengthening when mm -hmm. you're not in it you know able to get to the mountains all the time like i get it mm. um we're really lucky here that every, uh, around every corner is yeah pretty much. Is, a, is a hill or a mountain hilly. or something yeah um so yeah you you can you can adapt and there are always things that you can do to work around so mm. yeah and those let those um you can get like weighted um ankle oh, yeah. things around to go yeah, around yeah. your ankles and those would be brilliant as yeah, well yeah just yeah. Cut, like charging up the stairs at home yeah, and definitely. stuff like that like that would be brilliant yeah, yeah. just got, thought of that got some top tips here from uh Brian, Brian. get used to wearing boots all day every day carrying a weighted backpack everywhere for the day. yeah i mean for days at a time yeah that's brilliant advice and that's something that i did for when I was training for TubeCal again, I when I was on the Stairmaster, I'd use a weighted sandbag. I would even sometimes take my day pack in and put like a plate in it. Mm. You know, the weight, you're not going to be carrying that amount of weight on the mountain. I, I think I did like just 10, 10 kg or something. Right. Yeah. But it's 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 going to be strengthening your legs. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, yeah. ha have, having that strength in your legs is, it just helps so much. And Charlotte's also said train downhill. This Ooh, was the most yeah. difficult. Yeah. yeah, that's such. And I know that's something that Jen reflected on when she came back from Tupacal because oh, she right, found yeah. that the hardest, she said. Going down. Going down. She said on her knees, it was just really painful. That's a, Yeah, that's a good one, actually. Now you mentioned it. That is Thank Charlotte for that. Yeah, like it's not something... <laughs> For me, anyway, it's not something that you think about no. like going down. No. Like, you get to the top, you're like, yes, yeah. I did it. And then, <laughs> oh, i got <laughs> to get down. Um, There's no helicopter pad, unfortunately. So, yeah, so, like, you've yeah, you've got to be strong going downhill. Yeah, like it, yeah. It can be tough. And 
long as well sometimes yeah. when you just I mean I I struggle with my my knees as you know and I um for tube cat well it played up for the first time when I was actually in Peru mm. um in Cusco and I was like oh my god what am I gonna do and I was really limping around it was really painful I managed to get like a knee support from a local pharmacy um which was good but for two cal obviously one step ahead I knew that we were going to play up and I don't know whether it's a mental thing for me because they started playing up like two weeks before I went and did two cal and I was mm. nervous about two cal um so I don't know whether it was partly mental, but they were really they were really sore. Yeah. I think it's like the cartilage or something, or whether I just because I'd up my training so much. Right. Anyway, for tube cal, I had on um, the K. Is it the K T tape? Oh, okay. The, yeah. the, the tape, just like muscle tape, mm. taped my knees up. And then also on Summit Day, I put the knee support on as well. So I was really, really supported. So that's just learnings about your body. Yeah. What like pushing it you know you you, you know it's going to be you're going to be pushing your physical strength and you know what's the first thing to go almost like mm. it, I'm, I'm yeah my knees are a bit weaker okay great well now i know that yeah i know that i'm making sure i'm packing the tape and the the knee supports and and and, and the gel as well for the evenings and just right, yeah. you know all the all, all those extra things that i'm making sure that i have packed um, because I know that that will probably cause me an issue on the mountain, but mm. it's something that I can get over by having the right stuff with me. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, Bride Bride's mentioned something that I remember to pack a, a sense of humour, <laughs> which is, but it's, no, it's it's a good it's a good point because it's something that I I was going to expand on a bit is kind of with regards to like expecting the unexpected. Yeah. And that can be very handy with sort of adventure travel because sometimes things don't always go the way that you expect them to go yeah. or, or necessarily want them to go, yeah. um, be it with weather, whatever it is, injury. Um, but just being flexible with sort of, you know, what to expect. And it can, I think it can really add to the sort of positive sort of, you know, the mindset and, 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 you know, not being too down when things do happen. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like being able to like look back and go, oh my god, remember when I <laughs> like, or like I remember getting a message from we got a message from Zach and Jody, and they were like, oh my god, we've missed our connecting flight, and like obviously at the time that is like <laughs> unbelievably stressful, but like you can look back now and be like, oh my god, hilarious, like yeah. it was it was an absolute nightmare. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> yeah, so having that mindset, obviously at the time it can so a, a lot of the time can be quite testing, can't yes. it? To yeah. be able just to be like. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, I mean, actually, we did a similar thing. We didn't fill out certain forms for when we were going into American uh, airspace when we went it over to Peru. We didn't realise because we were only kind of um, stopping over in in Miami for for a connecting flight. But because you were going into, I don't think you st you don't have to do it anymore. I don't think so. We'll have to. The girls, yeah, we'll check, the girls we'll check, will we'll know. Check that. Um, but we were like, oh my god, we're gonna miss our flight from Heathrow. Like mm. we were really and like really scared, um, and like that was just completely on us for for not for not knowing better. Mm. Um, but now I'm like, oh my god, the laughs, <laughs> like being being on the <laughs> phone, like fun. put through to like all these different people, being like, please, like put our forms through like straight away because yeah, like yeah. we're not gonna be able to get our flight. Yeah. yeah. Um, it so yeah, yeah, it things happens. like that happen. it happens. I mean, yeah, I mean, with me and Jody, with um, missing our flights and stuff, like because we ended up in um, where did we end up? I can't even remember where we ended. Anyway, no, when once we got to Tanzania, yeah, they asked for our yellow fever. Oh yeah, and we were like, we don't need yellow fever. Yeah, and then we we're like, oh, we we had to stop off in a country that you know requires the yellow fever. <laughs> But we didn't, obviously, we hadn't planned for that. Oh, what's that? How do you pronounce that? Nairobi, there we go. There we it go. was Nairobi, yeah, because we stopped off in Nairobi, which we originally weren't meant to. And then, so we've got to Tanzania, and they're like, you need yellow fever. I'm like, no. no. <laughs> so thankfully, we weren't there long enough for, for us actually to need it. But that was a lesson learned because, you know, it is good to plan ahead for yeah possibilities like sure, that always look sure. at your connecting flights yeah um. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure oh my god it's so scary it's yeah. so it's so i get so stressed in airports anyway it's a stressful it's, environment it's yeah. a stressful environment yeah. Yeah, yeah. um shelly's just said um 
Shelly said earlier, she was like, yeah, it's like walking on air after using the ankle weights. It's, it's, it's honestly, it's not they've not something I've used before, but I'd like no. to. And I th- that's actually something that in the gym, it's really important. Like, don't forget about certain muscle groups because mm. I um, I really struggled on Machu Picchu because I hadn't trained my calves. Right. And I was like, oh, they're sore. <laughs> they are sore. <laughs> And that's something that, again that I did, diff- did like learn from mm-hmm. from Mount Tubcal and um, and and yeah, I, I was able just to, to to train them. You know, you don't need to do much, yeah. but when you've got like really muscly, like it looks so ridiculous. And it's like I see so many people in the gym, and they've got like they got quads of steel, and then their calves like they're piddling calves, and I'm just like, oh my god, please train your calves, please, <laughs> please. <laughs> um, so that's just something to wow. think about if you are a gym goer and you like to train in the gym. Yeah. Um, right, Bri Bri, if you've got doubts before you um, go, take it from me that the guides will look after you as, yeah. as if they were your own family. They really do, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's so heartwarming. Like, they're so good at their jobs. Yeah, yeah. It's incredible. And the amount of comfort they're able to give you and knowledge and, you know, they, they just keep an eye on you, don't they? And just yeah. make sure that everyone's ticking along and yeah. just, you know, quiet eye. Yeah, I think I think something with the guides that I learned is kind of not to be afraid to admit when you're, like, really struggling. Yeah. Um, because they will help you. Yeah. Even if you don't ask it, they'll probably, you know, yeah. they'll likely help you. I mean, our guides were amazing, um, Kilimanjaro and... They practically carried me up on summit night, um, and like they just took my bag when I was struggling. They took my bag, um, and I just had to worry about putting one foot in front of the other. Um, and so, like, they are just the best. They are heroes. Like, yeah, on the tracks. they really are. Yeah. Jerome's just said due to weather they can fly um, to Lukla. Yeah, so that's another huge point, and I think obviously, Pete, the whole Lukla thing. Um, going from Ramachap and stuff, that's another unexpected thing for some people. Obviously, right. the past couple of years, it's been that's been the norm. Mm. But um, you know, fly, having to then travel to Ramachap to to fly over to Lutla and and stuff like that is unexpected. But it's mm. all part of the journey. And I was speaking to yeah. Andy about it. It's like, yeah, it's not the most comfortable um, kind of kind of journey over to Ramachap, but actually, you get to see loads more. Um, so yeah, there are like pros and cons, and it's about being in the moment and being like, okay, but I wouldn't get to see this, you know, if we were flying from, from yeah. Kathmandu and stuff like that. So yeah, it's all it's all part of the it's part, all part, of it. part of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was another few things that I had said when I was thinking about. Um, having the right kit was one one thing that I learned. I was really cold on Machu Picchu. We we oh, had yeah. like some un- unexpected cold weather, but I still should have been prepared for that. Like mm-hmm. it was still a possibility. Um, it was like the guide was literally like, we haven't seen this in 14 years, which I was like, okay, fair. But <laughs> I was really cold and like my down jacket just wasn't really warm enough. Luckily I had David given me um, one of his old down jackets as well. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to pack it just in case. Um, and I ended up just wearing them both. Um, and right. that was like sufficient. But when I'm like going to be packing for an- my next trip, like it's something that I, I'm like, right, is this definitely going to be warm enough? Like I'd rather be too warm yeah, yeah. and, uh, you know, be able to take off layers, layers, than, layers, layers. Than, than be too cold. Yeah. Um, and we were talking about it in the office because a big trip like this, it can be once in a lifetime. And I think my bank account definitely took a hit when I <laughs> was buying all the kit and, you yeah. know, making sure like, you know, you are spending money in the right places, you know, a fleece is kind of a fleece, but getting a proper down jacket is really important. Mm. And, I was speaking, Jody was said the same, and it's like try and p- pace it out so you're not buying all things at once. Because right, I yeah. went very, um, yeah. got very, <laughs> got very into like <laughs> buying everything, and yeah. I was like, oh my god, my bank account. Um, so that that's something to think about. Just if you know you plan these trips in a couple of years in advance, just slowly, slowly like get the get the kit and, and make sure you're doing enough research into the kit. Looking yeah. at reviews is a huge thing that I always do before I buy a piece of kit to yeah. make sure that it's actually going to last yeah um and step step up exactly yeah yeah 
And then other nice bits to have, I was thinking, like, I never packed, like, card games, oh, yeah. downloading yeah. podcasts and stuff like that. It's just really, I really like. Yeah. Um, and I would have really valued on some on some nights mm. when you're just like, I just need to just chill on my own for a minute. Yeah. And just so now. Yeah, I didn't do enough of that. Um, especially on Kilimanjaro, because I was I was like desperately trying to find like all these downloads. I was like, <laughs> I've not downloaded enough stuff. I need more music. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm just a proper music nerd, so like yeah. I'll just listen to music all the time. But I just didn't. I just didn't. didn't I don't know why I didn't. Anything. But I just yeah. I didn't do it. Just didn't think about no, it. No. So yeah. so if so I can entertainment do it again. for the evenings. Like it's nice. Obviously, it's so nice to be in the mess tent and everything. Yeah. But. I'm one of those, like, I, I love being with everyone, but then, I, you know, when, when it's so intense and you're just like, I'm really tired, I also just want to, like, go sit in the tent and be like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me take a minute for myself. Yeah, just, just, no one talk to me. <laughs> Let me listen to my podcast. <laughs> just wait. <laughs> um, yeah. Someone said, uh, hire kit. Yeah, exactly. That's another thing that you can yeah. definitely do. Yeah. And there are like, there are loads of companies um, in the UK as well. Like obviously you can hire a certain kit from us as well, but there are companies in the UK you can do that. And you can like, you know, you can still go in store and like try it on, make sure that you like really like it. Um, like certain pieces or before, before you hire yeah. hire it but yeah there are loads of companies actually that that do hire kit Alice yeah. Brigham's one um but there are but there are companies that are like built on on the basis that like you hire kit for. yeah yeah but well, something I learned um because I I found really useful was going on the the Scotland Winter Skills oh yeah um I can't remember exactly when I did it um but so yeah. It was after your first two cal, wasn't it? It was after. It was definitely after the first one. I don't know if it was before or after the second two cal, but anyway, that was super um, helpful with regards to kind of what to wear and what not to wear in sort of winter conditions. Yeah, um, and it really put me at ease because with that, you you learn things about you putting on crampons and how to w- yeah. walk in them properly, um, which. For trips like tube car, when you do use crampons, depending on the weather, um, it just puts your mind at ease. You don't have to faff around with like, I have no idea how to walk in these things. Yeah. These spikes on your feet. Um, they are quite intimidating as well. And yeah, there's obviously yeah. a knack to, and if you trip, obviously, and if you trip in the wrong place, like yeah. it's quite icy in parts where yeah, I yeah. was going up. And some people were opting to use crampons mm-hmm. when we were doing tube car. Um and so some, yeah, yeah, you don't want to you don't want to be slipping. No, and sometimes, especially because on our second tube cal trip, we had to put crampons on and off like throughout the Did summer. You? Yeah. So like, if you didn't know how to do that, I can imagine it being proper stressful. Yeah. Because um, you don't want to hold that. You don't want to feel like you're holding up the grid. No, like, no. It's natural. And obviously, the guides will they'll they'll tell you how to use them beforehand, but it's just good to have the actual training with them. You know, yeah. On a on a on a weekend like the winter skills with someone that's there to help you as yeah, much yeah. as you need. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we do actually. We are we are fully booked, aren't we, on the January February winter skills? Yeah. People have gone mad for it this year. Shelley, yeah, I know that you're that you you're off as well, so you'll be able to provide some insight afterwards. But we do still have a few spaces left on the March one. There still will st- still be snow up there at that time of year. Yeah. So yeah. it still would be a really good experience if that's something that you're kind of in interested in it's great. um it's great. you have a trip upcoming um it's that like knowledge knowledge is only a good knowledge, thing yeah yeah um i'm just gonna scroll up a little Savalak. bit people Savalak. are people are commenting on their got a few on it. stories um yeah simon said the journey to ramachap uh, definitely adds to the adventure <laughs> um richard the guides was um so good at knowing when um you need help or yeah. need to stop such an amazing team are oh, yes. brilliant that's awesome bri bri um we had to spend an extra two weeks in Kathmandu. we reached ebc on march uh, the 23rd the day the country went into lockdown Ooh. yeah of course that's like it's the so mega <laughs> that, <laughs> that's so mega <laughs> I'd be like, this is my life now. This (laughs) is my new country. This is where I live. (laughs) (laughs) Um, 
Mike said, um, yeah, when I went to EBC, we had to heli from Kathmandu to somewhere in the middle of um, somewhere, <laughs> where uh, then overnight uh, um, and heli out in the morning. Um, to pack ding landed by a tea house very scary at times but oh my god what an experience yeah of course wow. it's the unknown though it's got it's, it's like and it's also really mm. normal to have that anxiety and like oh, oh yeah. god what the hell are yeah. we doing right now yeah. like this is crazy yeah um but yeah it being able to look back at that and be like wow i actually got to take a helicopter like that was actually mega cool yeah like, i'd love yeah. to go in a helicopter <laughs> um yeah, Jerome said better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Yeah. Wait, better to have it. Yeah, and not need it than need it and not have it. Yeah, did I? Did I... <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, exactly. And that's, yeah. that's, and I think that's kind of, that's like Dave's motto. Dave was giving me mm. all sorts of stuff before I went over to Tube Cal. Yeah. And it, and I was so grateful because. I didn't use it all, but like when my dad got sick, there was there was medication that he'd put in for me, yeah. and I was like, oh my god, I was rooting for everything in my tent, like what's Dave packed for me? And yeah, like yeah. he packed like medication that my dad needed, so and you know I wouldn't have had that otherwise. Mm. So yeah, you just you never know what's going to happen, no. and yeah, thank God, yeah, thank God you did. Uno in the tea houses on EBC. Nice. That's. I love that. Can't that's, go wrong with that's, Uno. I love Uno. Um, perfect. Jerome, Rosie, slightly off topic here. Will you need a sleeping bag for our TMB trip? Yes, yeah, sleeping bag. We'll be in um, the tea house version of. Are they like refu refugios? Yeah, refugios, they're called. Yeah, that's exactly what they're is called. That, is that the word so well looking? read up. So well read up. <laughs> <laughs> it was do you know what it was a decision that i was speaking to jody a couple of days no what day are we on tuesday we were right, last tuesday. week we were chatting and we were all talking about what we wanted to do next and i was like oh, i really want to do tmb yeah and jody was like yeah i'm not sure what to do and i was like well come with me <laughs> so we'd been like going through the itinerary and like google imaging like all the pictures of like all the different places we're going to visit yeah, and we're like yeah. yes this is the trip for us so the excited one. so yeah there's definitely more research i need to do jerome but um yeah we will need to sleep in bag and i'm so excited to get out there that's it's going to be very so exciting. much fun that's, that sounds great. but do we have any questions no. never trust a bag that david can't as well <laughs> i know yeah that is that's probably a good motto to live by is that, is that, usually yeah. mm. um let me see if we've got any questions okay, okay. I'll scroll up here just a bit. Um, what's right? Andy's actually sent a message Ooh. saying, um, "What's been both your toughest and favourite moments on a trip?" Go on, you go first. I've got to think about this. I think it was on Machu Picchu on that first the night. Tough, is this the toughest? the toughest? Yeah, the toughest was definitely on that first night when I was literally looking up at Tokto Pass. I was just like, "It's not happening." It's not happening. There's no way. And mm. I just like tears rolling down my face. I was mm. in a tent on my own. And I was like, this is really scary. Mm. Um, and I'm cold and I'm tired and I'm not sure it's going to happen. Yeah, that is, that is really <laughs> That tough. was my toughest moment, I think. Yeah. Um, it's hard because like the Kilimanjaro trip for me, it was <laughs> the majority of it was tough for me just because the, the, the state that I was in. Mm. I think something that was really tough. Well, I think for, I have to have like two. I think because like that moment where you're like, yeah, I think I'm gonna. I don't think I can do it. Mm. And that was like day two. I think that that was really tough. Just being like so, like not you're not even started. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like this should be the easy bit. Yeah, it's like yeah. this isn't how it should be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've come all this way, all of this prep, and like. And I'm unwell. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just the worst situation. Um, so that was that was really tough. And then I would say on summit night, obviously Kilimanjaro summit night is is tough. Mm -hmm. um, it's a long one, seven hours, mm -hmm. seven or eight hours. Um, and the moment you see, so the the moment is dark, mm -hmm. and you're seeing lights of like people in front of you. <laughs> And they're about like there. <laughs> and you're like, well, 
surely they're stars? <laughs> surely. Like, they could have been. I was delirious at the time. <laughs> but like, when when you see like people like above you, yeah, and you're like, <sighs> surely not. Right, come on, you yeah. gotta like, you yeah. gotta pump yourself up, yeah. psych yourself up, and you've just gotta smash through and do it. Mm. So that's tough. That initial like, woof. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But yeah, you, know, you did it. Yeah. And favorite moments. Favorite moments. Do you know what I think mine was? It was so beautiful. Like I got, we got such a clear summit on Tupacal and just looking over the Sahara Desert, great, it? it was re- like really amazing, like mm. really incredible. And I was just like, obviously like views in this country, like oh, I've been, i like always been really lucky, like grow- growing up in the countryside, like surrounded by mountains and having an amazing view. Yeah. But something that vast, and you're like, it's so hard to wow. get your head around, yeah. and it was just so clear. Um, yeah, it was it was amazing. It yeah. really was amazing. Yeah, I've got some of the some of our killy guys here, Kevin and Charlotte. Those lights mess with me for hours. <laughs> <laughs> Charlotte, I got cross with myself every time I looked up. Yeah, it's yeah. best just not to look up. Yeah, <laughs> just, I get just that. Just look at your feet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and make yeah. sure you're not One you're step falling over. Yeah, um, but I think yeah, my favorite moment. It's gonna to have to be. I mean, obviously, like the first summit I ever I ever did with with two car that was amazing. But I think on Kilimanjaro, when you you first reach, so you've got a point that you reach called Stella Point, and once you reach that reach that point, you've just got a little further to to go to um to the summit to Uhuru Peak, um, and that. Once you reach that point, we were all just like absolutely ecstatic and like crying, and mm. then we were, the, our guides were singing, and oh. um, it was just like a really surreal mm. moment when you're like you're high on altitude, mm. you've been like struggling all of this time, not feeling 100, percent and like you just reach this point and you're just like wow, like, yeah, we've we basically made it, yeah, just a little bit further up, yeah, <laughs> you've got to you've got to walk a little bit further, and you're like ah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, but we've basically but we're, basically, we're we've basically <laughs> there yeah i mean yeah kevin the emotions at stellar point will stay with me forever yeah it's just uh, overwhelming isn't it yeah it's amazing but yeah so that's 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 probably my my standout favorite moment um someone's saying i'm going to um machu picchu next may what will the weather be like mm. pretty nice i think the girls will have to double check with you um but May, yeah, I'm sure that's this pretty nice, nice time to go. Pretty warm, mm. um, yeah. I think, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm not usually, I'm not usually <laughs> let loose on like customer questions. I'm like now, like I'm never. So I think I'm out a bit out of sync now. Um, Mark, do you, want, do you want to take the next question? Yeah, which one are we looking um, at? Oh, Jerome's put Jerome. in a suggestion. Oh, guys, how about a TTI dedicated to methods and techniques for mental trek preparation slash training thoughts? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, mean that, would, that would definitely. That's be going to be helpful. To yeah, people, 100%. yeah. If, if people want that, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure it'll be Andy and Dave that um, do that. We're not going to do this all the time, are we? <laughs> do, do, do you want to do this? This will probably time? be the last time you see us. <laughs> I think we're doing all right. We've done it I before. Don't know. <laughs> so Sophie sent in this group in the group chat. Andrew Scott um, emailed over this some a picture of some of these journals over. But look at those, aren't they cool? Lantang. Oh, wow. He's done like drawings. On... No, you're not gonna be able to see. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's really cool. So Maybe we can post that in the group. Yeah, yeah post it. In yeah, that'd be yeah, great. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, favorite places to track in the UK? Oh, that's a good one. I mean, I've done, I've done like Penavan so many times. Yeah, so I wouldn't say it's my favorite. Well, I love doing the horseshoe. So the horseshoe is yeah, something horseshoe we do on nice. our on our Brecon training weekends yeah. usually, um, and that's amazing. So th- those of you that, that that haven't been to a training weekend, thoroughly recommend that. Mm. When's on? Is it August? Our next. Yeah, it's August. in August. We've got so we, yeah. we're changing things up a, a bit this year. We've got Bracken as usual Ooh, yes. in 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 August, yeah. which is going to be really good. Um, and then we're going we're going over to Snowdonia. Um, and I think we've got like five spaces left, so really limited space in for yeah, that people one. People have really snatched. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, and it's nice because people 
obviously with Bracken we do and because we do because it works and like that that route is so good for assessing training and, mm-hmm. and it kind of replicates but um it's going to be cool to go somewhere somewhere new with Snowdonia and it yeah. means that obviously people who have been on Bracken have ha- are going to be able to join us again yeah. for Snowdonia. We'll, be, we'll be on the both on the yeah Snowdonia we'll be on the one. Snowdonia yeah, one yeah. which will be yeah. really fun yeah um so so yeah limited spaces and they're both still on early bird so if you if that's something that you did want to do get booked on um because okay. they are great weekends and yeah. the people from the people james <laughs> <laughs> james the from the altitude center will also be joining yes. um like he did last october yeah yeah, yeah. um right. and he he's brilliant he'll join us for the whole weekend on both both trips um and he'll kind of then have a talk on the sunday we kind of go off into kind of um like, like a workshops, round, round robin. yeah, like yeah. a round robin situation. So Dave and Andy are doing their kit chat. Um, James um, does a, a talk up on the altitude. Mm-hmm. You get to use one of the machines and kind of feel what it would be like up to like six thousand meters, which is really cool. cool. You get you know test your blood pressure and stuff like that. Really and and then Smurf, the mountain leader, will kind of go through technical care and for people who are kind of interested in that mm-hmm. um, and safety on the mountains and stuff. So so yeah, it's such a valuable weekend. Yeah. I love that. It's yeah. really, it's really good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what? Well, oh yeah, so favorite mountain. At the minute, I'll I'll say Penavan. Penavan in, in the UK. Until we until we find something better. Yeah, until until we until we get to Snowdonia. Let's see. Um, <laughs> See, I've only I came up. I like came from nearer North Wales, yeah. mid Wales, but. Down here, I'm like, people say, oh, you're from North Wales. And I'm like, no, no, like, mm. I'm from Mid Wales. Like, people from North Wales be like, no, you're not from me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, so I have done some, it was very busy. I like all the little, like, smaller, like, mountains over over this side, I think. Yeah. Like, I like, love, like, the Garth and, like... Oh, the Garth is great. Doing, like, yeah. little, smaller... There's so many routes. Yeah, well. yeah, I'm trying to think now. But then there are places in England. <laughs> yeah, I've, yeah. yeah in recent fun. years, I haven't done a lot of English. No, mountains. I haven't. Obviously, I haven't. I'm from it's England, bad, but like, <laughs> yeah. I did a lot in the lakes. In the yeah. lake district. Any suggestions? We'd be grateful for. And yeah. Where's your local mountain? Yeah. I took my ex and the kids um, on a route. On a on a route. Once the ex has never lived it down. <laughs> She learned the lesson about toilet etiquette on the mountain. So, oh no! Oh wow! Okay, yeah, lesson learned. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's Actually, a good lesson that's to a be good learned. One. Toi- bring toilet roll on trips. That that's, yeah, that's toilet a, roll wipes. A Jerome likes his body wipes. Along body yeah. body wipes. They're brilliant. Yeah, that's a good. That's a the Peak District is amazing. Mm-hmm. Someone said one of the mm-hmm. teams said. Yeah, yeah, the Peak District. I went I went loads when I was a kid, but I don't really remember it much now. Kin- Kinder Scout Peak District. I'll have to, might have to go on a jolly. Mm, yeah. yeah. Well, oh, hell Where are we at? Oh. Yeah, I'd yeah, like yeah. to do Hell Valen. I've heard yeah, really I'm, good things about yeah. Hell Valen. Yeah, yeah. Really good things. Yeah. Um, ben Nevis. Ben Nevis. Yeah, yeah. yeah, again, not not done it. Have you got any more questions to go through? Yeah, I mean, we do. I'm not sure what about that one the girls might have to answer. <laughs> um any top tips for uh tomakea route for machu picchu mm. top tips top just tips. just packing the the right kit what specific kit you need mm. you're not actually like tracking um you're tracking for like four or five days yeah. so you know you don't need to just be cautious not to overpack because i know that the, the weight, weight limit is small, is quite it? small yeah. um and you yeah you only need like a couple of spares of stuff so just that would be probably my advice not to overpack yes um kit like kit wise like you need a couple of base layers a couple of you know um tr- like what well, maybe one spare pair of trousers or, right, you know yeah. um don't overpack um but one thing I, I'd advise for if you, you are going out to Peru and, and stuff, make the most of it whilst you're there. If there's any like extracurricular activities that you want to do, obviously we've got some extensions out there. You can go visit Rainbow Mountain and stuff. But one thing I um, 
I, I horse ride and that's something that I was really, really wanted to do when I went out, you know, somewhere that potentially I'd never be able to go back to. Yeah. So um, I booked, um, we had an extra couple of days and I booked to go on um, a, a riding experience, which was like amazing. Um, so yeah, do your research, look out on Trustpilot is brilliant for like finding different things like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I recommend just making the most of all the time you have out there because it's such an amazing country. Yeah, it's so incredible, and like the people are so nice, and there's so much to see and do. Um, yeah, I recommend just making the most of it. Awesome. Oh my gosh, we've got loads of recommendations here, Zach. Yeah, I know. Look at this. We're gonna be busy. <laughs> Already put Rainbow Mountain excursion. Oh, oh brilliant! Cool. Yeah, brilliant. Nice. That does look nice amazing. It's not something I did, but it does look. It looks incredible. I think no. Vicky did Rainbow Mountain. Didn't did she? she? She went. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she said it was really cool. Great. Um, well worth it. Yeah, awesome stuff. Almost about the hour. <laughs> I know, just about. Oh well, yeah, yeah. I think we've answered all the questions. Yeah. Should we? Final words, do you think? Final words of wisdom. Final words of final wisdom. Words of wisdom. <laughs> so we need to pull up like a Pinterest quote or something. Yeah, we need some inspirational <laughs> quote. Um, I don't know. No, we've covered some good stuff there, I think, with the, the lessons that we've learned. On our, yeah, on our train, find a training that you enjoy and that yeah. you can fit into your lifestyle. Yeah. Find time for and that you enjoy. Mm. Yes. Mindset for you. Yeah, yeah. Keeping a positive mindset. There's plenty you can do, um, you know, with a little time. Um, and I guess something that I haven't mentioned, but yeah, just to sort of finish, I guess, is is sort of gratitude and being sort of thankful for these type of experiences. Mm. You know, even when they even when things don't go well or you're feeling a bit shit or you whatever it is like just being grateful for for what you can experience mm. and then like you know down the road when you look back on it you know it's it it grows you it, it's you you've grown as a person mm. um you become stronger um and yeah you can you can do almost anything <laughs> that is so true yeah. like we're really lucky that we yeah. work for for our track and we can go out and have these experiences i was speaking to a customer yeah. like yesterday and and he's asking me like oh what what trips have you done then and i was like i literally wouldn't be able to do this if i like didn't didn't work here and like be like push myself as well yeah. to yeah. to do some of these things like it's dave dave, dave always laughs because i'm like i don't I don't want to go on a trip where I'm like freezing cold and really uncomfortable. Like I, I love like the views and like the journey and like the different landscapes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, yeah, super grateful. And yeah. it's, it's so cool. I love traveling and, and yeah, yeah. Seeing all different, different things and different cultures as well. So yeah. I love it. Well, as Charlotte said, and as our, our guide, yes, he says, strong heart, strong mind. Don't think it, just dream it. <laughs> That's great. so sweet. It's great. I love that. I love that. Power to the people. <laughs> <laughs> right. On that right note. Before this gets too political. On that note. Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> well, this has been this has been nice. Yeah. Let's hope it happens again. Thanks for joining us. As, as and as. yeah, we'll speak soon. Yes. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>